Infections in children are caused by microorganisms that include bacteria, virus, protozoa, fungus, and many atypical organisms. But most infections in children are because of viruses, which are followed by bacteria. And many parents ask the question, why children are at increased risk of getting infections? That is because of lack of immunity. A child who has not been exposed to a previously to a virus or a bacteria doesn't have a protective mechanism, like they don't have antibodies in their body to fight against that virus. So whenever a virus enters, so it slowly multiplies and causes symptoms in the child. Gradually over the time only, child develops antibodies and he will be able to fight with the virus. The common problem is for a simple cold itself, there are nearly 200 viruses which can cause a simple cold. So even if the child gets immunity because of a cold, but for the next time he may be infected with a new virus for which he is not having antibodies. So that is why they tend to get recurrent colds and coughs. As they grow up, because of the immunity they acquired during the childhood infections, so they are able to fight with the uh, previous viruses. The other thing is children tend to play with all other children and they're in contact with all adults. So whoever has the infection, there is more chance that child can acquire from him. And the other problem is children doesn't follow hygiene. Example, they don't wash their hands properly or they don't know about proper toilet hygiene and so So uh, that is why they are at increased risk of infection. The other problem is allergies. Sometimes uh, a child who is having allergic rhinitis may be diagnosed wrongly as having uh, recurrent uh, viral colds and all those things. If you are able to remove or identify the allergen which is causing an allergic rhinitis, then obviously the cold can come down. So these are the causes why uh, children are at risk of infection. The most common viral problem uh, every child encounters is cold and cough. As discussed, cold and cough can be caused by multiple number of uh, viruses. And uh, it is a fact that uh, children less than three years can have up to eight episodes of cold per year itself. So that is normal. Uh, and the symptoms of cold, we all know they are having a, some sore throat, cold, uh, running nose, and sometimes cough, and a low grade fever can be there. Similarly, uh, there is another virus which is called as influenza virus or commonly called as a flu virus which can cause the similar illness. But the, usually uh, the additional symptoms which a flu virus will have is child will have a high grade fever, body pains and loss of appetite and he looks very tired. And based on the symptoms, doctors can identify which is a common cold or a flu and based on that they may give some antiviral medications if they are suspecting flu. Uh, a simple cold or cough usually resolves uh, over a period of 7 to 10 days. But sometimes the infection can spread to our lower respiratory tract. For example, if it sp spreads to bronchus, it is called as bronchitis. If it goes to bronchioles, it is called as bronchitis. And if it goes to the last parts of the lung, that is called as alveoli, then it is called as pneumonia. So virus can affect any tract, but based on your immunity, uh, the infection may be res uh, restricted to your upper respiratory tract or sometimes it can spread to your lower uh, respiratory tract. The second common is the ear infections. The ear infections can be like uh, uh, external ear infections or a middle ear infections. The most serious problem uh, a child can have is a middle ear infection. Most of the uh, viruses like which cause cold can cause fluid accumulation in the inside the ear of your child. So there is a tympanic membrane which, uh, what you call, which protects or which separates your external ear and your middle ear and it is helpful for the transmission of sound. So whenever there is a fluid inside the middle ear, this tympanic membrane can bulge and sometimes a perforation can happen in the tympanic membrane and uh, baby can have hearing problems. A simple viral infection usually it resolves, but if the baby gets a bacterial infection super added, there can be pus coming out of here, which is very a serious problem. The third most common problem is this diarrhea, what you call as a loose motions. So this is most commonly seen in uh, summer seasons and a child can have some abdominal pain, sometimes vomitings and sometimes a low grade fever. Most of the time it settles over one to two days. 
but if you find any blood or any mucus in your uh, child motion then it can be a bacterial infection and you need to uh, give antibiotics to the child uh, the other common complaints or viral infection which we see is a skin infection or a skin rashes and nowadays we are seeing uh, the hike in cases of what is called as hand foot mouth disease or what you call as a tomato flu where child gets small papular or raised pimple like lesions which are mostly seen your wrists uh, palms and soles uh, elbows and knees and below the buttock area sometimes the oral cavity can get involved and child may have difficulty in swallowing also so uh, there are some other fevers also which can present with rash these are the general viral infections viruses can spread from one child to another there are multiple ways and it depends upon the type of viruses for example the viruses which are causing respiratory tract infection spread from one child to other through droplets droplet is like whenever a child coughs or he sneezes he releases small droplets into the air the larger droplets just settle down uh, on the tables or the door handles or on his hands and whenever anyone any child touches the surface and they get in contact with their eyes nose and mouth then the virus can enter into them and the smaller particles which are present in the air they float and they remain in the air for some time and when we inhale that air the droplets can uh, enter the respiratory tract and cause infection to the uh, other child this is regarding the respiratory viruses the other thing is regarding the gastrointestinal viruses they are usually spread from one child to other through uh, contaminated water and contaminated foods rarely uh, it can be vector borne also like mosquitoes can spread viral infection from one child to another example is a dengue fever or yellow fever and rarely through blood or uh, contact with the blood of a person infected with a viral infection like uh, syringes or needles uh, it can spread uh, from one person to another person there is no specific treatment for viral infections most of the times what we do is called a symptomatic treatment so we wait for the body to recover and fight the viral infection there are only a uh, few antiviral drugs and that too only for a few uh, infections so generally what we uh, tell the child is for example who is having a upper respiratory tract infection uh, we tell them uh, to take rest to keep them themselves hydrated as much as possible to take good food which in, we should include fruits and vegetables and if he's having a uh, nose block we tell them to take a steam inhalation use nasal saline drops and sometimes a doctor can prescribe uh, decongestant drops to reduce the congestion present in your nose for children who are suffering with uh, loose motions the main aim is to replace the water which is lost through his uh, motions so we tell them to drink lots of water uh, fluids Uh, so that they they should have a normal urine output uh, doctors can prescribe uh, some probiotics or gene syrups based on the severity of your disease so most of the things parents do is to take antibiotics for a simple cold or cough because uh, doing this will uh, promote what is called as antibiotic resistance and the next time whenever your child gets a bacterial infection your antibiotics may not work because you are using the antibiotics unnecessarily and other thing is to take all over the counter medications like cough medicines most of the cough medicines which are available in the market are contraindicated for children less than 4 years they are having some systemic serious side effects so it is not advisable to take any cough medicines or antibiotics without a doctor supervision if he is having a very high grade fever example like 103 or above and it is not responding to your oral medicines or fever has decreased for the past uh, one or two days but again it started rising again which indicates he has got second infection with the bacteria and these things you should have to go and meet doctor sometimes a child who is who had cold and cough now suddenly he has rapid breathing or difficulty in breathing he makes uh, some noises while breathing and his cough is uncontrollable and uh, his lips are turning blue and on a pulse oximeter if his saturation is coming 95% that indicates that his lungs are infected and he may have to go to 
hospital immediately. Some other symptoms are like a severe headache or a severe epigastric pain or vomitings or loose motions are not controllable and child is not able to drink water or eat anything and he is becoming weak and weak uh, and his uh, sensorium like he is becoming drowsy he is not responding to your commands and sometimes uh, whenever a fever rises above one or two some children can develop seizures that is called fits all these things are danger signs and they have to consult the doctor immediately many people think that uh, in cold climate viruses multi- multiply more and that is why children are uh, getting more cold during the winter season but actually the viruses which are causing cold are present throughout the year but what happens in winter is our local immunity uh, uh, undergoes some changes so that a child is susceptible to get infection for example uh, whenever a virus wants to enter our body for example through nose it has to get attached inside the nose then it has to go from uh, nose into your throat and then to the lungs so the protective mechanism present in the nose is the mucus the mucus which is produced won't allow your virus to get attached to the epithelial cells whenever uh, your atmosphere is cold or in winter season usually our mucosa gets dried so there is less mucus production so your local immunity has weakened that is why uh, the virus gets access to your body and that is why we get recurrent colds uh, in winter and the other reason being uh, we stay with uh, tend to stay indoor so we close all our doors and uh, windows so there is no cross ventilation so uh, the air stays inside and all of us stay uh, close to each other so even a, a single person gets then it is easy uh, to spread from one person to person so cold and a dry air will decrease our local immunity and that is why we get cold and coughs uh, during winter first thing is hand hygiene most of the viral infections are spread through hand contact whenever a child touches the virus or any object and he tries to keep it in his eyes or nose or mouth then the virus gains access into the body so you have to teach your children proper hand hygiene so tell him to wash his hands with soap or antiseptic lotion whenever he comes from outside and whenever he wants to eat food or whenever he cups or sneezes on his hands he has to go and wash his uh, hands and even after toilet he has to wash his hands cleanly and uh, you have to tell them not to touch their eyes or nose or face frequently with their hands and if, as a parent if anyone has a smoking habit in the home they should avoid uh, smoking in the house even it in the another room also it is not advisable so passive smoking can increase the risk of recurrent respiratory tract infections and try to provide good high, healthy food to your children so which contains proper nutrients vegetables fruits dry fruits which can increase your immunity to the child other thing is to do a social distancing or isolating your child whenever a family member is having a some viral infection or uh, separating your child at home when he is having uh, some cold or cough so that if he doesn't spread to other children in the school other thing is avoid drinking water from outside when you are going to a shopping mall or otherwise try to carry your own water bottle that is second third is uh, to protect from mosquitoes so whenever your child is going outside try to wear full sleeve dresses or apply some uh, mosquito repellents uh, whenever you are staying indoors try to use a uh, mist doors and windows or at least use a mosquito net in your home so that he is not bitten by the mosquitoes and uh, last but not the least is the immunization so check whether his immunization schedule that is vaccination is up to date or not uh, if your child has not got the flu shot it is the time for him to get the flu vaccine annual flu vaccine so that he develops his immunity and he is protected from the viral infections